Are there any revisions to the agenda? Uh, I have a couple. Um, I'd like to add uh, 2.3.2 and 2.3.3 so we can touch, touch briefly on goals two and three as well as goal one. Um, and then uh, I'm not sure where to add this, so this would be like a discussion item or an action item, but I'd like to add a, a brief executive session for the purpose of discussing a contract issue. So is that 3.2.6 or? Probably. I guess I, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we'll probably do that at the end, but we'll put it in the agenda at 2.6. Can we discuss also that the issue of, you know, signing on to the, the, the um, court case that's been put forth here kind of regarding Act 46 and the legality of this you know, forced consolidation? The, uh, the, the SU as a, as a, sure, we as a unit? I think we, we should, can. We, um, I would think we can, but I think we should discuss it. You know, as it's going to come up. Individual boards. It's going to come up under two point two point two. Okay. When we discuss the default articles of agreement, it, it for sure will come up under that. So, That's good. Yeah. Any other revisions to the agenda? Uh, any public comments and correspondence? We do. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I put it on the public floor email. Okay. She asked about making sure we were going to appoint a proxy for VHI Visbit. But we also need, is it, I think it was for the Vermont School Boards Association. We can okay, only, the forms are right there. We can only have one voting rep for right. the entire SU. Yeah. So someone has to be approved. She okay. just wanted to make sure it got on the agenda. Yeah. She's was. willing. I, I forgot to. She was the Viz, she was the VSBA rep last year, and we willing to do okay. It. And then from Scott Thompson to Floor sent it to me. It's Scott's. Oh, yeah. It's a. I have to have it to me, but three. So she asked that that be distributed. Do you have one? Yeah. That's all I have. Any other public correspondence? Any executive committee comments? I think it might be worth mentioning the, the movie. I appreciated getting information about the resilience movie and being able to attend that on Monday. I found it interesting and useful information. Yeah, I agree. I thought the film was great and the panel was awesome. And, uh, you know, there was a fair number of people there. Yeah, so. it was a great turn. Actually, it was a really good turnout. We weren't sure what it was going to be. And 65 people were there. Uh, it was a great turnout. And for anybody that didn't uh, have a chance to see the film, maybe hasn't seen it, if you're looking for another opportunity on the door, <laughs> as so it what? says, at that Kellogg Hubbard Library next week, they're showing it, I think. I think it's, I think it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. either Monday or Wednesday. Okay. And it's, it's Priscilla who was there from the Department of Children's. Uh, DC, uh, our children and families, uh, they're hosting it there. Mm -hmm. uh, we're having a kind of similar idea of panel, but I'll include the same people besides her. Yeah. Brian might be there. Yeah, she's, she can do a lot of work in this area. I'm sure. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, would anyone like to move approval of the minutes at 8.15 and 9.05? So moved. Second. Discussion? There's a typo on the bottom of uh, page two of the packet, because it's the first page of the 815 minutes. It says motion to uh, make. Yeah, was make. Was made. Motion was made. I had one comment on the September 5th minutes. Um, this is on page 7, uh, just after the break. 
Um, I just noted that there was a motion made, and then there was some amendments to the motion, and then the motion was passed, just kind of all going spilling over onto page eight as well. Um, normally, we, we boldface motion, motions and, and votes, so I'd love to see that just so that it's not kind of buried in the text, but easily, easily found in there. Are there any other comments uh, on the minutes? All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Abstentions. Uh, 2.1, budget timeline. So I think that you should take a look at page nine. Um, you'll see an SU budget timeline. We're at September 19th right now. Um, I think the, the question I have for the board is we, last year this, the supervisor union board uh, changed the assessment methodology so that we're doing, a, um, we're assessing for everything including special education across the supervisor union. So about 63% of our budget is a special ed budget of the total budget. We can bring you a budget in October 17th, which is our next meeting. So if we do that, the service plan has to be wound up for the state on the 15th. And Lori and I were talking about a week and a half ago and said, can we get from the service plan being done on the 15th into the budget on the 17th? We probably could bring it that day to the meeting where you would have no time to look at it ahead of time with the special education costs in there. Um, so it, that's, we're just, I just want to be realistic about the mechanics of how this is done. I'm willing to do what the board would like. Uh, we, in past years prior, in previous years brought up without the special education, we can do that too. Um, I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to, trying to just make all the timelines work. This is an operational thing, and it seems like why am I discussing this with the board, but I, I, I'd be willing to think about different board meetings if possible. Um, other board meetings, uh, so you have a full picture when you first look at it, if you'd like to look at it in pieces, but your next board meeting is until November 21st, where you'd have the whole budget. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a little tight for you as a board. Uh, and then having, uh, a, a looking at our traditional calendar on the 5th of December being the adoption by the SU board. So I'm willing to do just about whatever you'd like, but I'd like to have this discussion about how this is gonna service this for the executive committee and for the SU board. Uh, the principals are in the budget building for the special ed service plans that are already starting to do meetings with Kelly and building I actually one is done already of all the buildings. But you know, so they're in the midst of this, they know what's going on with the SU budget and with So typically we would be making a recommendation on that budget on the twenty first November twenty first. Usually twenty first you're you're saying this is where we want to go with it, right. to go to the SU board for the fifth. And this isn't that different from previous years. Right? It isn't that different. What I'm just trying to say to you, and another thing that puts in there is our HRA administrative costs. As I talked to you about in my re report, we have a lot of fluctuations going on right now in the HR administration and those, those costs because of what's happened with future planning, giving up the administration, what we've actually found that it costs to administer in-house versus the outside cost for that, so. What time do you think you would need <coughs> beyond this, you know, the I, next meeting? Oh. I mean, in, once in, you get this special ed, you know, special yeah, ed. Once it's in there, <coughs> I think it's, you know, that, that's why I'm saying we have to send it to the state on the 15th. Mm -hmm. So that's that Monday. Right. It'll probably be done somewhere on the Friday to that weekend. If I remember how the service plan usually goes, it's usually that 10th to 15th, everything's being sewn up. Mm -hmm. And then we put it in. That's what I'm saying, I can bring it to you on the 17th. I just can't guarantee you I can give it to you before the night of the 17th mm -hmm. to look mm -hmm. at. So if I did that, I realize you're getting something that's basically moving from one spreadsheet to another without really any thought or analysis of the overall, which is fine. I don't mind doing that. I'm just trying to be really transparent. Mm -hmm. Would we have everything other than the special ed before the meeting? Or was that bifurcation make it more difficult? It makes it more difficult more kind of for people. Lori, and I'm really watching okay. Lori's time right now. Lori's, our finance department, that's why I made the decision I told you on the report that we're hiring another personnel is because our finance 
finances that we're paying out over time left and right for our finance department right now. It's not being really judicious with what tasks I give them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would it be reasonable to look for a week later date for the executive committee meeting? I think that sounds like that's what we should do. Mm -hmm. Isn't there an... We have Paris Hour on the ESU board meeting that next Wednesday, but we could look at other dates. For me, yeah. we can look at other dates. That's fine. Right. Yeah. I'm just, I'm not trying to like think it through in my head, like how it flows. Like the idea is generally that the executive committee tries to review the material so that if the agenda for the SU board needs to be crafted or structured in such a way, or if we have a recommendation to make or whatever it yeah. might be, that we do that, right? So right. So we could still do that. We could do everything else and do a budget, a special hour budget meeting for all of you the next week. I wouldn't want to do it the same night as the carousel, but I'd want to do it. That, that might work as a conference call, too. Is that? Yeah. Is that yeah, good, yeah. Sure. yeah, I could definitely give it all you. Lori and I could be, we could... You know, we have a couple of people here open up to the public here and those who want to, you know, we have the yeah. the conference calling capability. Do you have a certain number that you can, is it unlimited or? Uh, I have a okay. yeah. We can make that work. I think as far as that issue goes, it sounds like what I'm hearing is that we're not going to expect to have a budget on the 17th. Um, we could change our meeting around, but there's a lot of reasons we might want to have more meetings or change the time of our meetings or something so maybe we can circle back to this kind of at the end when we talk about future meeting times and yeah that seemed like a good way of after the night. is there is there anything else on the that's that's my biggest piece um mm -hmm. i'll tell you that the boards and i i'll be saying this to everybody next week um we're starting our budget process as we talked about last meeting so I mean, unless you've all changed your thought process, but I took there. I mean, I, I didn't ask for a decision from all of you, but I, I insinuated from talking to the board. So let's start our let's start our budget process the way we always have. So we're starting here at the end of this month. Uh, buildings. Budget. Yeah, you're looking for some guidance, some sort of big picture. I'd like some big picture. I will tell you that we just found out that the healthcare costs are coming in at 11.8% increase. Oh. We're going into negotiation year where the CPI is going up. It's at least a percent and a half higher than what it's been the past couple of negotiations. So that will drive the percentage increase of the negotiations. Um, and we've had low negotiations because we have low CPI, I think. We've been about a percentage to a percent and a half above the land of negotiations from CPI. We're at 2.6, and last year the CPI was at 1.8. At so, you know, we're or two years ago when we were negotiating for that. So it's, those are just good factors to know what we're coming into. The CPI right now, I want to say, is close to three. Mm. I haven't looked at it in a couple of months, but that's where it was mid-summer. Um, negotiations haven't even really begun. In they haven't even begun. Yeah. So, you know, those are, that was, the principals and I had that discussion in here yesterday about budget process, and they, they said, what do you think? And I said, well, we're always asked pretty much for a level of service, so we're going to go for level of service. But I'm going to tell you, if my, you know, I have some crystal ball where I'd like it to go. And, um, but that, and then I told them those two pieces about we're going into negotiations, here's CPI, here's health care. And they all looked at it and go, oh, that probably means cuts. service seems like a logical starting point. But you'll get, you're going to get numbers that are in the fives to sixes. That's my estimation. That's without mm -hmm. per all. Percent increase. Percentage. Yeah. You know, without, that's just my, that's just intuition. That's nothing, there's no science or calculation behind that. That's just a feel. Yeah, well, 63% is special ed, and that's likely to go up, right? Is there an indication of the driver in the health care is? What? Is there an indication as to what the driver of the health care is? Because I think I thought I heard on the radio that the Green Mountain Board um, only gave like a 4%, maybe 5% increase. To the hospitals. To the hospitals. Right? Yeah. This is, um, I think this is it's just utilization of, we're self-insured fund, and it's utilization of what we have, and that the difference with only the HRA right here out of VI is if we fund the HSAs instead of HRAs. They feel we would have had lower increases, and 
and that the HRAs and the HSAs that were negotiated were quite generous to the employees. So it hasn't really, it hasn't changed the utilization of healthcare. So it's been steady in terms of utilization over time? I don't know. That. Know. I don't know that. I don't do, I don't get that deep into it. <laughs> I listen to VI, we, we own we own them as every school district does. I rely on those experts. Do we have any kind of sense of if we are forced to consolidate governance, what those expenses might be like? Well, I don't, but I can tell you from supervisory unions that have consolidated that they had, that had the hundred fifty thousand dollar grant, they used all that and some. Those numbers really would they would almost be irrelevant to a consolidation, wouldn't they? I mean, more. I don't think he would save any. I don't think he would. S He's not asking about savings. Expense. 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 Expenses. 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 Two consolidated. Two consolidated. Oh, oh, one time. Sorry, I thought you were one time expenses. For one time expenses. Go for that process. I'm, I'm sorry. You are misunderstood. Because that, you know, we'll know by the time we adopt a budget whether we're doing that or not. But it's something to consider. Yeah. I mean, that was part of the rationale of the. We're looking at the workload right now in the finance department between software changing coding systems because even though we changed the coding system already, AOE has changed it again, so it's still not locked. So, um, software and then the healthcare and all that, and the amount of overtime we've been paying, it was like we need another finance person in here. We can do it at no cost to the budget. So, because of how much we're paying in. Because of the, we're looking at savings right now and how much we're paying in overtime and yeah. the work is there. You can only work so many hours. I'm not interested in anything more than a level of service budget. I'd like to see anything more than that. Yeah, I'm not trying to get yeah. you anything more than that. Because <laughs> it won't be level funded. <laughs> well, I think Maybe we, level. I guess what I'm hearing is we, that's where everybody seems to be saying that's where we should start. I, yeah. I, I would agree. I mean, it's, um, and trying to say anything less than that would be pretty arbitrary at this point. So. Yeah. That's our guidance, such as it is. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> kind of expected that guidance. Yeah, yeah, right. Like I said, the principal kind of heard that guidance from me <clears throat> yesterday. Right, right, right. Did you say level service or level funded? Level, level service. service. Level service, yeah. Uh, okay, 2.1.1 is uh, priorities. And I don't know if Bill, you cover this or you wanted to speak to this? <clears throat> Um, I just wanted, I, we, I did cover some of that as we were talking about with the finance. We're trying to keep everything afloat right now um, with all the pieces we have to do. I'm not happy, I want to be clear by adding this position to the finance that I told you about the report. I'm not changing the bottom line of the budget. I'm able to do it within the budget where we see some savings and some from the set aside for the software that we're not going to have to expend mm -hmm. because we have to go to the state software. And we were planning in that to have a part, a part to full time person for a year or two right? in that total cost of three hundred thousand. So this is part of that what that person's going to be doing. Okay. So. You're already offsetting a lot of overtime, like you said. So right. I mean, you're, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've been eating away at our sub cost, at our sub lines are almost come up in in a month and a half, in all in two months. It'd be a tough academy here. We can do it. Lori and I have figured out a way to do all this so we can meet all the bottom lines and make everything work. Uh, and, you know, so it's going to work money wise. It's the. I was just thinking more in terms of the complexity of what's going on. Oh, well, that's why. This is what, yeah, that's, that's what's driving it. It's not nothing about even about that. Yeah, yeah, I can see. Yeah. 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 So, so I, I just wanted to mention, and maybe this will come up again under 2.5 when we talk about the agenda for the SU meeting. Um, but in conversations with Bill, as well as kind of interacting with the, the central office staff and some of the principals, um, and just thinking about like, you know, this year, and no matter where the state board is going, you know, there's a certain kind of element of um, chaotic energy in the system this year. Um, and then there's, a, there's a, a sense for me, and I think, you know, Bill has said this, that this, the, t the staff is just flat out and really actually overextended. Um, and so with that in mind, it's probably worth discussing with the SU board, I think. Um, if you want to discuss it now, we can. But um, the extent to which the WCSU boards can try to 
really be cognizant of that and aware of it and you know trying to minimize if possible you know kind of random special requests and you know even even maybe major agenda things that we you know in another year we might think well we'd love to put this on the plate of our leadership team to be thinking about how to do this or that um, we just have to think very judiciously I think about kind of the resources um, that we have in the system and kind of what they can they can really do um, so it's just yeah I mean, one of the things that I said to Matthew is I'm if we can get through negotiate get through a settled contract at the end of the calendar of the school year by June thirtieth, and we get through Act forty six, that's a win for me. Mm -hmm. We get together and we come through together, all working together and all that. That's a win. I'm not talking about where we land. That to me is the win. Anything else? I'm going to even put school monitoring on that. All of this is like second tier to me mm -hmm. as your as your superintendent. Those are, that's, along with running the ship and keeping the kids learning. And, that, and that's why I, I told the principals again yesterday, I said to them, guys, you, I need, I'm gonna trust and I know you can do it. Keep your focus on the staff, the kids, and the parents. That's what I want you guys focusing on. So if I know that's taken care of, we can work out of these other bigger issues. So. There are some uh, preemptory things that you can hear about from the um, principals. That just don't to the, tell the board. Don't bother us about this. I mean, so, don't, so it's going to be. It, it's it's keep them. Let them focus. Go ahead. I'll give you an example yeah, of something example. that I did in the last Dodi meeting, <laughs> which is that uh, we were having a discussion about our capital fund and the money and where it came from and how it should be used. And I said, "All right, well, I want to know like how would we spend that money, you know?" and that just puts a whole, that it puts a, a slate of meetings and a whole bunch of discussions and a lot of work on Bill's and Matt's plates that they, I, I think, in retrospect, as I um, think thinking about it, do not need right now. So that's just, an, my, my that's response, just an example. So when we were talking about response to Matt, and that's pretty, I, I totally get the question. It's a really fair question and it's one that should be asked. And I said, Matt, that question you asked just put on a slate of about two or three meetings for Matt Young and myself working with John Hemmelgarten at Black River Design to estimate costs to come back. So now you just made about 10 to 15 hours worth of work to answer that question. For building work that probably can't be done on the timeline we were talking about anyway. So I'm just saying like, I'm pointing to myself and saying like, it's so easy, you know, just to think like, wow, we really should do this. And I guess I'm just voicing, seeing what that's doing and seeing what the central office is up against and the principles that you know, it's kind of worth our our thinking about and being very careful and thoughtful, I guess, about what we're doing. Um, we should bring this message to our individual boards. Right. And, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking if we're in agreement about this, the executive board member on each local board would have to be kind of the watchdog of that mm. to, to point that out when it comes up, not to say no, but to say, okay, you know, what's this going to add? Conceivably, what's going to not get done now because we're going to do this instead? That kind of a discussion. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if we're in agreement, maybe it's kind of incumbent on us mm -hmm. to to not direct the, not say no or not say well, yes, but just say, say no. well, I think just to point, I, I just so in my board, I, I just want to point out. That we've already we already know the central office is really tight this year you know uh, bill or alicia how much time do you think this is going to take and let's consider what we're asking because like you say you, you may <clears throat> i don't want to say um, um you make a an uninformed request it's a valid request and if we're the ones just alluding to the fact that Remember, time's tight. There's only a limited prop. You know, at least that concern is being heard. There's a flip on that, though, too. I mean, we mentioned <coughs> things like the capital fund. I mean, that's, I mean, essentially the schools, you know, kind of as of, you know, we're forced into consolidation. Those are, those are dollars that those towns put aside, and those go into the bigger fund. They may not come back to that community, so. You know, there was certainly the argument of a catalyst is sitting on a couple hundred thousand dollars that was put in. 
you know, why, you know, we might want to invest that in a building before we do that, you know, so it actually ends up in our building and not somewhere so else. That, yeah, that's, the, the, go ahead. This is the exact conversation we were having. I'm this sure is, were, this is yeah. why we kind of put it on the table. On the other oh, hand, yeah. um, and I don't want to, I really don't want to talk about that issue right now yeah. specifically. But what I will say is that, um, you know, I mean, I, I put out the request because I, I sort of agree with that point of view in a way, but no matter what we do, we can't do major projects to our building before school is over. And not uh, obligate the money. No, you uh, can't. It's a long, I can't so this is a whole, and my, my point, the larger point, and I don't want to, I don't want to discuss this, it's just more that, you know, I'd really sort of ask, um, and what I'm hearing some consensus about this at least, is that boards should just be aware of resource constraints and, and really be, you know, sort of taking that into consideration. I, you know, we can't, the executive committee and the SU board can't tell the other boards what to do anyway, so it's, but it's just about being aware. Um, and I think if there is some, I, I think we can do this by consensus, is that we would ask the executive committee members to just bring this topic forward to your boards as part of the executive the committee report, you know, and it, it, it care of some things. That are mm -hmm. Uh, this is definitely an issue, and I, I know I get feedback on that from other citizens of mine. Something that kind of makes them angry, you know. You know, the money issue, not the time issue, right? It's the money issue. The yeah. way, you know, the fact that they chose to set that aside, you know, that was a strategic plan, and then it was diluted elsewhere because, you know, not, and that's an issue. It's our, it's really not their fault that that we're in this situation that we're in now. You know, it's not our fault either in a way, you know, but. I, I hear you, I'm just gonna move this on to the next. No, I get it, I, 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 I will be voiced. I mean, the, <laughs> right. the point's really well taken. All right. Uh, 2.2, so this is. So, uh, is that what we're doing priorities? I, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I just, you know, and I'll let you, I'm gonna be a, probably a little more, I, at times have been aggressive in the past, and I'm going to be again to say, we can do that. I need some guidance on what you want us to drop. I'll probably be that direct. Good. I mean, yeah, thanks. Because of what's going to, I mean, without, what, there aren't unlimited hours. And and it can be come from the school, it's just it's taking services away from those three clients we're trying to serve. Mm -hmm. that students and Well, I hear that, Bill, but I, I also, you know, I don't have a problem. Voicing yeah. concerns, but um, my thought would be that's where priorities would re-enter. So we get a level services budget, and it's I'll be extreme. It's ten percent increase, so we know there's no way. Um, that's to me not where I come in and say I want you to cut this, this, and this. This is where I come in and say these three things are the priorities. You can't touch those. Come back to me with a five percent. And that's not what I'm talking about, Stephen. Oh. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is um, we've had in the past sometimes the boards have asked for we'd like three or four options, and we'd like to know how you know how can we do this money and that money and that we. It, what would this new program cost? What would this new program cost? We just can't do that type of stuff this year because I, I just don't have the finance department. I mean, I can do stuff on the back of the envelope. I get pretty close myself, but it's just. Those are that's the places. Yeah. If we get, I want that direct. I mean, I want that. No, I that direct Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So let's go to two point two, which is uh, Act Forty Six, and uh, oh, this is back to the timeline. The timeline. So does everyone have a copy of a uh, mm -hmm. letter from Paul? If not, I brought extra copies printed out from Paul to the night. Oh, the, uh, the, the opinion. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Okay, so uh, let's talk about Twinfield, I think, first, and then there's probably many different things we can touch on under the draft uh, default requisite agreement item. 
Um, so if there's an update. The, the only update is today, I realized once I had everyone respond to a poll, is that the dates I proposed aren't going to work. So we're probably another couple, probably another, I'm going to look at after the 2nd of October. I was trying to get us together before then. Um, I was just saying to Stephen earlier when he got in here earlier, it's like we can get one from us or one from them. And uh -huh. just, so it's a scheduling. Yeah, sure, fair enough. Okay, issue right now. But I, I sent an email that I sent to Kari and Stephen and to Scott to Mark saying, hey, let's come to the meeting with a lot of the same data we looked at through the 706B process. Like, come with it prepared. Like, Why will statistics? Like, get it on the table. I mean, and if he has it for, it doesn't have it last year, but two years back, that's fine. It's not bringing up what we have from two years back. Mm -hmm. you know, so we'll have all that ahead of the meeting. So it's not, we're not spending a meeting, what do we want to collect? Okay. It can be, what else don't we have? Okay, and there, you, and you do. You probably read David's article in the Times article. So you have a meeting with Barry as well. I did not. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry, David. <laughs> <laughs> did that happen already? Or was... No, no, no. Okay. It was for the twenty sixth, I think. Okay, so two point two point two draft default articles of agreement, and I'm going to suggest that there's at least three topics I can think of that could come under this item. So. One would be just a general review of the articles themselves and the, um, the, the attached or associated literature, let's call it. Um, and then uh, there is, of course, the debt, which we talked about last time, and then I asked uh, and now have uh, an attorney's opinion about some of those issues. Um, and then there's the point that uh, we also talked about last time, and, and Rick has already raised, which is I, I would kind of frame it as um, to what extent uh, do the boards of WCSU intend to uh, try to resist or contest um, different options that the state board might um, might take in you know the next couple of months. Um, those I guess would be the three. Um, Main topics I would see. I mean, there may be others that people have. So you're talking more like a full board agenda item? Is that what you're? Yeah, I mean, these are things, yeah, I mean, some of these things are not really for us to decide. Um, but, uh, but I think we do want to review kind of what we got back from the attorney uh, here, figure out if that should be on the agenda. Um, it may be worth our time to kind of look at the, the default articles. Um, if people have had time to review them and have comments or insights or observations to share, share about, about them in general or about potential challenges, uh, these kinds of things. So, so I don't know if that answered your question, Stephen, but yeah, it's about sort of what do we bring to the SU board and how do we want to bring it, I guess. Um, I, I would say the, the legal response um, should be part of what goes up to the full board. I, I think it's to about put it in the packet. I think so. It's yeah, about sure. providing as much yeah. information. If we've got information, let's provide it to everybody. Right. And so you're doing it this way. Yeah. I reported my okay. board members. I just um, so I think it just goes in the packet as I you know uh, around. It could just be rolled into your second discussion agenda around debt. Um, well, let's talk about that first, maybe. Okay. That's, yeah, why not? Um, so, yeah, we received this response from the attorneys, uh, the attorney, I should say. Um, you know, does anyone have any observations or thoughts to share? No, I wasn't surprised yeah. by it. Yeah, it's not definitive in a lot of ways. Um, I think that my reading is the fallback position that I can't do it. Uh, because there's no list of our statute to do it, and they come and fill into it, as cited here, is to have an explicit um, authorization from the legislature to the towns in order to do something. So, it just it didn't seem it didn't seem like there was a very clear, you know, defined way of doing it. Um, not to say that it shouldn't be tried, but just not a, there's no, I don't think there's a legal map of doing it. Meaning sure. there's, yeah. there's definitely no legal map in here no. for doing it, that's for right. sure, yeah. Right. So it's kind of new, it's new territory, no legal. Yeah. 
and then you know you always have to have someone challenging it um, in order to get it in court. It just doesn't automatically go into court. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do you know you can take different positions and 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 uh, you know, take a legal create a legal structure, and, and if someone challenges it, you know it will. As long as folks who are involved in it agree and move forward that way, it, it will operate. Uh, but you have to have someone to challenge it because the court doesn't reach out and say, oh, that's interesting. I read that in the newspaper. I think sure. I'm going to call you guys. <laughs> 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 <I'm> just, <laughs> so you do have to have a complaint. Right. Complaint. Right. There was the one suggestion at the end to consider carving out East Montpelier. So, so I asked Paul for that back, and I have an email from him saying it was more speculative than okay. anything else. Okay. Um, Something I can read you the email. He sent it to me today. I said, because Scott asked me that. Scott Thompson asked me that. And I said, well, I'll forward that on to Scott, on to Paul, and he can respond. He responded to Scott and myself. So let me get you that email up. Um, you know, if the basis of that is because I'm players, East my players that is so much higher, you know, kind of same issue is with Berlin and well, Middlesex for the, uh, the other folks. It didn't seem like it was really that even among even those four towns. It was still a right. significant shift. Right. Well, uh, so it, it struck me as odd. I haven't seen his response, but the example he cited, um, I didn't find relevant because in that district, Huntington that didn't participate Volunteering and elected not to participate. Yeah. They weren't excluded, where his suggestion was an exclusion. Mm -hmm. ah, true. Huntington didn't want to join the yeah. Yeah. So. Although, I, in, in, well, I'll, I'll say one thing, or I'm dead. I think it's still worth our time talking about it. I, in my mind, I don't, I'm not sure I want to continue to discuss specific options that I feel like I've received some legal advice that it might be difficult or uh, quite difficult. But it does, from, in my mind, it doesn't preclude us from continuing to work on that issue and, and creatively put good minds together to see what could be other things that could come up, other possibilities that could be explored. I think, I, I think for many of the concerned people, we want to exhaust every possible avenue around that topic. Um, and it's not to say that something would change, but I think I, I, for me to do, do due diligence as a board member, I would like to feel like every single possible scenario was explored and examined. And, you know, so maybe these ones aren't the ones that are going to work. Let's keep putting our heads together and, and seeing if we can come up with something that would work that could fit in somewhere. Mm -hmm. Or even if it doesn't fit in, that if it was presented to legislatures, they'd be like, that's a great idea. And maybe we could get some traction on it. Mm -hmm. There definitely is a way to balance that debt. You know, just so whether you can allocate that, and it really is as simple as looking over the longest debt period. You know, we, there's a snapshot point from the time you consolidate and you take a photograph of that time, and then you, or that's your start point, and then the end point is the longest debt that is standing at that point. So any debt that's accrued beyond that beginning point is actually shared, right? so it's out of this equation. But you look at the projected debt, or basically kind of the, the, the dollars you're gonna have to put into each of the schools over that, in this case, 17 year period where you've actually got that standard. And you, you project that out based on what your buildings are looking like they're gonna need over that time. 
you actually come up with this, you know, series of five dollar ranges, and it gives you a way of those can then be balanced. I mean, if one is larger than the other, then there's going to be a transfer of assets to the schools that are, you know, have less in that period. You know, it's kind of, you know, and it's actually fair to everybody if you do that. It's fair to East Montpelier. I mean, East Montpelier is carrying a lot of debt now, but they also don't have as much in the capital expenditure side over the next 17 years because they have a new facility. So they, you know, if they had to pay up something right now based on debt, they would actually get hurt because other schools would then, their bigger, the debt they'd be incurring over that next 70 years would not be, that they would be, those expenses would be shared. So that's the only, I mean, that's the way you would balance this. I mean, you could actually come up with numbers that way, and there would have to be a couple of contingencies in there, and that was if a school was closed, then all the debt from that closure year forward would have then have to be compensated back to that town because they would no longer, you know, their, that, that would no longer be a piece of their equation. You, know, that, I mean, you have to look at that aggregated debt through that 17-year period. And so there would be a balancing of that. If something got closed, then that might only be for a six-year period or something like that. Well, but, my point is I think that discussion should still go forward, forward with even if it's a so smaller you, group. Are you suggesting a, you know, a subgroup I, to keep working on this? I mean, Chris and I, as directed by the group, did meet. And mm -hmm. I think it's fair to say subgroups seem the logical way to Let's figure out some stuff. solutions. Yeah. yeah. Will you put what you're talking about in writing? Because if yeah. we share that, I and mean, if we have a discussion, if they did see you as a whole, yeah. that should be out there rather than I just, help. so people can talk and think about it before. So there's a couple different, I mean, yeah, we can't, first of all, this ha this should be discussed with the full SU board, you know, which includes the members of all the boards. Um, and I think we can't really decide anything here tonight anyway. Mm -hmm. I guess I would, um, so one thing I would just suggest is that to this this group, and if is there anybody else you know that's particularly invested in this topic and has a creative idea, it'd be great if people came to the SU board meeting, if they want to put an option like that on the table, something that's actually, you know, kind of written up or in a digestible or presentable format, because otherwise we're just kind of brainstorming like in the meeting and, you know, that's going to maybe not get us very far. So that's just one suggestion. Um, the second, th the second question is kind of what we, what we include in what we, in the packet basically, um, for this topic for the SU board. So, um, do people want to include Scott's two-page kind of options paper that sort of sparked this discussion? Mm -hmm. And then we have this response from the attorney. Um, in the draft articles, the default. The default articles, obviously, uh, have to be in there for sure. I, and I, I think we might want to consider putting together a one-page memo from the committee that kind of lays out all of these considerations, uh -huh. infield, debt, articles, just to make sense of it. I don't know if it's going to be one page, but we can try to, <laughs> try to do that, yeah. What's this word? This Scott, kind of? just the, uh, This is new. Yeah. This is in response to a, a question, I think, from Kari. Is that right? Or, um, we were going to try to get together and haven't been able to do that. I guess, yeah. We, but we, you know. This is, this is basically, this is, obviously this is Scott's cheat sheet, I guess, on kind of like the, the basic um, characteristics of the debt issue, let's say. So I haven't had a chance to review it, I have to confess, so I don't know, you know. Oh, we just got it tonight? Yeah. Yeah, I looked it over quickly and I haven't had a chance just to verify the numbers, which there's a couple of them there that I really want to go look at, because I've just, I look at it and said, ah, I'm not sure. Okay. It, it's yeah. very, it, I think that principle is in the right direction, but the, I'd want to. The, the table seems like a uh, step forward and sort of boiling it down. But I I mean, don't know how Rick and I talked about what he was talking about, and Rick, I'd be glad to work with you on that. I was actually just looking at my calendar when I have free next, next Monday or Tuesday. It's Ooh. tough for me right now, and this week and next week, because I'm down a guy and I'm covering his load, and it's yeah. 
is for me to gather. Okay, so why don't you and I talk here? We'll work it out. But, but I think, I actually think, and other districts have done exactly what you're talking about to, to figure out the debt merger piece. Mm -hmm. That's how that's how Champlain Valley got through it. Did and that's how Harwood got through it. And what did it look like? Was it a commitment? To they, went to, they went to a bond right away, if both districts did, because they had buildings that were much different shape than we are now. Mm -hmm. But their buildings, like that's how the Warren School got rebuilt. That's how Williston Central, the Williston School System schools were in pretty bad shape. So they spent 30, a $35 million bond as soon as they came together huh. uh, to fix those schools because it was they could see the inequities. Yeah. And you know they, in, they didn't in, have to do any inequities in the in, in the facilities, in the facilities right. and the bond indebtedness. Yeah. There were inequities both ways, and they said, "No, wait a minute. We need to get everybody." I mean, it is a two-sided. Right. So you know, yeah, oh, yeah, you've been right no about problem. this the whole time. Yeah. And you got to look at both, and mm -hmm. um, you know, you, I don't think you have to be from talking with uh, Bridget Nice at Harwood and uh, Elaine Pitney at CV at uh, Champlain Valley, um, their business managers worked on it, but they didn't do elaborate, you know, they didn't do detailed inventory of every building. They used some allotments. It wasn't that hard, and it's time for the allotments I've used before with you doing estimates, estimates of values and cost to maintain buildings. I mean, you don't need to get into the real detail of accounting. I think that's smart, I mean, in projecting, you know, because the, I mean, my tendency is I'm an asset management guy, you know, I go and look at those. Yeah, you like to know assets, but, but that's complex, and you're still projecting. Right. You know, so there's going to be variability in it, but at least it gets you in that ballpark. There's probably a way. You can get a ballpark pretty quick. Yeah, I think so. I that's why I say, if you and I sat down for an hour, Rick, I think we could get us in that, to look at it from both sides. Mm -hmm. With just yeah. square foot estimates and like estimates here. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I guess maybe Bill, you and I can talk about uh, if you have time to look at this. We can talk about whether or not to put it in the package. Is that yeah, I think. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, I just I, I don't want to put it in like you know without having a chance to kind of review it. I guess. And, um, so, but yeah, I think we can work that out. And then there's a question I think for the SU board on: Do we want to create a a uh, you know a small group to actually do a deeper dive on this topic and you know um, but I think again I guess I ask you any group that tries to do that work is going to have going to have questions. questions. This is why that, this is in my priority area. I mean this is why I said it's getting through Act Forty Six smoothly right. and negotiations smoothly. So this is where I'm pretty like if you need the support. Okay, we're going. There. One day, yeah, because yeah. we have one shot at this. We, yeah, we got to get it. So it's this is when I said, what are my priorities? Those are my two priorities in keeping okay. the SU together as a whole. All right, that that is my where we land in organization systems. All that, mm -hmm. fine. Right. We got to be together as a whole. We all own commonly half our students. We own them all, in my estimation. But in reality, half the systems are unified. We, it's really important that we're together for the benefit of when they're in 7 12, that the 3K 6 is. So we're going to need a, uh, a discussion and an action item on debt informing us, the subcommittee, or something like that. So I just want to make a note of that for myself. Okay. Um, has everyone read the draft default articles of agreement? More or at least scan them, I'll say. If you've not studied them, that's okay. Um, so I think everyone's aware that the, uh, the I guess I, I personally found both the, the timeline and the sort of nature of how things are going to unfold actually a little bit surprising. Um, maybe I shouldn't have. Maybe that should have been obvious to me for three years now. But, um, but nevertheless, seeing it in print and seeing the actual every detail of it spelled out was... Um, you mean the, how accelerated it is? Yeah, just the... I guess, you know, I, I didn't have a good sense. I think people who were maybe paying more attention had a little bit of a sense of this kind of hybrid model 
of board representation. I didn't know that that was under serious consideration. That's one. Thing. What is the hybrid revision? The transitional? That's board? the one where two members. Well, both. Two members it's each town. both. Yeah. So it's two mem two members from each town that voted on collectively by the by a uh, a new union district. I think it's called. And the towns district. nominate and, and that's right. Yeah. Everybody uh, collects. So I found that surprising. I found that no. I don't think towns nominate. They don't. You yeah, sign your own petition. Yeah, you sign. Everyone signs a petition. Oh, I see. But each town has two representatives. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Then, then. Yeah. So you have to be resident of the town. Yeah. 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 Did, did you actually? Oh, this is. A, I, we take us down a wormhole. We don't need to go. <laughs> <laughs> and then, the, yeah, the tr the transitional board and the the fact that there's a, basically a, a a union district wide meeting, public meeting that's to be held that has to deal with a laundry list of topics that have to be decided. And so there's just a whole bunch of stuff in there that. Over you know, the seems, 90 days. What's that? Or with the 90 days. All within 90 days. Within 60 days. Well, yeah, right. the first okay. meeting within 60, and then, and all of that w would happen, even if November 30th, at the latest, is the date the board comes out with its plan, all of that would have to be done before town meeting day right. on March 5th, yeah. because that's past the 90 day. It, yeah, period. that's what they're trying to aim for from reading it and having a couple conversations I've had. Uh, yesterday, we actually drew the timeline out on this wall. So the whole leadership would, team. Would get up to? Uh, uh, July, July 1st, 2019. Oh, no, right. from, November, from November 30th to July 1st, 2019 with everything. Mm -hmm. And we put, you know, I gave you all in this packet a matrix that tried to line up the different timelines. And someone said, hey, Bill, can we just do this on a time, one timeline across the wall to kind of see how all this works and interfaces? And that was, you know, trying to take this and put it onto one timeline. And, you know, when does... When do those different pieces happen? The timeline overview at the end of the draft articles is also really helpful in making sense of those key dates. So I guess we don't all have copies of that, but I actually think we should talk a little bit about the beginning of that because State Board has indicated its desire to issue this report in late October. So let's say it's October 20th. That, then we have 60 days to organize a meeting, an organizational meeting. So it has to be warned 30 days in advance. So we're talking so, December. At the earliest, but I don't even think that. I think, I mean, some bo one board member has advised that, I mean, I haven't heard it. Maybe I've missed it, but the board has come out saying they're trying to come out in October with everything. But they, if you look at their data, uh, their meetings that are up on their scheduled meetings, they have a scheduled meeting for November 28th. So my, oh, the, the, the state board, board, it's on their on their calendar. They have a scheduled meeting for November 28th. Yeah, and I, I would think that they're not obtuse to the different things, the dif difficulties of scheduling in November, December. Right, so, 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 so I think, you know, as you look at that, you count out from November 28th, 90 days, 90 days ends before town meeting. Not too many days, I forget exactly when I was, but I was ahead of that yeah. when I counted it out. So, <clears throat> you know, and 60 days is in February, and 30 days is, you know, December 28th, so we might also say January 1st. But we can't count on the end of November. <laughs> we have to plan as it's the end of October, if that's what they've said. They haven't, I haven't heard anyone at the board come out and say that. I've heard uh, a member say that. It's in, it's in this memo. It's, a, it's the, right at the top of the timeline overview. State Board has indicated its desire to issue it in late October. Bills before the Barry pushed their vote to November. I mean, I think that's why they wanted Barry to go earlier. I see. Because they need to wait until after that happens. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dave. I, but we still don't know. I mean, it could be the day after Barry votes, or yeah. it could be, yeah. like, you know. But, I mean, the point is we have to be planning now. To have right, and I'm trying to think of worst case. So worst case to me is November 30th. Everything, every day we gain, I think, helps us. Mm -hmm. Could you explain why? Because I, I, that's interesting to me to hear you say that. So I think the sooner the transition board starts to do work, mm -hmm. the better. So, so the, the, the better. The because longer our ramp. Here's what I'm worried about. I'm worried for us. I mean, in the guidance in here, it says we are, we advise you that you get to a budget vote, and that has to be with the new board, not with the transition board. Right. And we advise you to do that by May 1st. I think you know the way this timeline's set up to get to a budget vote, and you have to warn the vote 30 days before. So if you have a May 1st vote, you got to be warning by April 1st. Well, if you elect people on town meeting day, 
which is probably what it's going to be. Now, I'm, in theory, can be, uh, the members of the, of the transition board and the new board can be totally different people in, my, in Bill's reality. I'm thinking there's going to be a lot of crossover there. So if there's more work that can be done on the budget work together to really understand the budget, because there's going to, have to be a lot of communication about what this budget is, because there's going to be a lot of confusion on it, the better we, the sooner we work on that with boards, the, the better that, the better that's going to be. And on the November, you know, once the ruling comes out, the local boards don't have any jurisdiction over the new budget for FY20. So I need a board whether it be transition, because the transition is going to recommend one to the new board. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to yeah. really want to specify for the sake of argument that we're assuming the state board, you know, mandates. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. That, that, right. that's, but I, I'm just, so, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to say it, because, yeah. you know, we don't know, but yeah. uh, we assume or, or project. Yeah. Um, the, and I don't even know, I mean, to elect new school board members on, even on town meeting day seems ambitious because those ballots have to be printed yes. in advance and have to be and there's a whole procedure in here for that and you, then you've got to get petitions to actually even have candidates that's why it's also in town folks office the sooner, the sooner we can back this up that's yeah. why to me it's all right the better it is uh -huh. my, from my chair i can you know i'm not saying i'm the one to say that that's the way it should be but right right from my chair so, should happen soon. Yeah. Right. Rather than you'd rather October than November. You got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't, think, didn't sound like you were saying. That. Oh no, that's what I mean. Okay. Yeah. No, if it had happened in October, I'd be much happier in October yeah. than November. But it's just it is what it is, and we'll deal with it. So what happens if you don't meet the deadlines? What do you mean? What happens if you don't meet deadlines? I mean, the, the timelines are just absolutely ridiculous. In this. I mean, that's, I mean, I'm sure a lot of times probably won't. They so won't. if we don't get to a, I'm not sure about which de deadlines, I can say this for the budget. So, uh, the district, and I don't know because you wouldn't have the same, if there's a merged district, you wouldn't have the same merged district. But under, when you have the same district going over a year and they don't have a budget, they can operate on 95% of the previous year's budget until they get a past budget. So that would mean a lot of rest happening. Um, although, so you're on the same contracts. Doesn't matter. May not, may not have the budget, but you at least have the guts of what you, you should say. Now you have to put out. Every, I've been through this before. Mm -hmm. You have to put out risks. Okay. And you lose your staff. You lose staff. Hmm. So that's budget. I mean, what else? We you know with all of the just the mechanical setup on this process. What. What would I mean? The, the obviously, budget is pretty critical to have yeah. something on top. Yeah. Everything else, you know, what about that? You know, the kind of the mechanical structure of this whole organization. We need that in order to have the budget. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, absolutely. And the budget's the end product of the mechanism being in place. Hmm. I don't have words bad enough to describe the people that set out to put this together. <laughs> just, I won't go there. It just, it's me. And this is where they were they smoking when they put that together. That's a lot to do in a very short period of time. Bill, can I ask a clarifying mm -hmm. question? Just, I'm sorry if this is really dense, but okay. when you're talking about you would prefer an October rather than November, what what would you prefer? I'd rather have a decision from the AOE. Okay. Or the state from the, the state, state board. board. Okay. State board, not AOE. Thank you for correcting me, Matthew. From the state board. Okay. I'd rather have that earlier than later. Yes. So. What I would suggest that in addition to forming a subgroup on debt, that we also form a subgroup on this process, this transition process, so that we can start mapping should out. Should it be the same steps. group? Or um, actually, it should be different, and it, it should probably involve at least a chair or two and a clerk or two people that are likely to be on the transitional board and be active. Mm -hmm. Not likely. Will we? Will we? Yeah. Will we by statute? Yeah. Um, Not by statute, but by the by the, by the the other thing I would say that we should do is um, just look at uh, having boards kind of uh, reassemble uh, a 706B study group. Because as, as I'm reading this, we can develop our own um, articles of agreement. Uh, in the last page, it says you can develop your own articles of agreement, but it's 90 days. You have to have it all done within 90 days. And if you don't, so then, I think those then the default comes in. Is I'm reading that language. I think translate. I, I think differently. 
I think that's the language of what the transition board does. The transition board does that. Mm -hmm. So I'm, yeah, yeah. I, I think what you're saying is a 706B group is, in fact, the transition board. board. Right. They're the ones that, yeah. that draft, that, so that's that lead the changes. Right. I'm looking at section two where it says, if the committee's articles are not approved within the 90 day period, mm -hmm. then the provisions in the state board's default articles of agreement included in the statewide plan shall apply to the new district. Yes. Right. The only the only entities that can amend the articles after the statewide plan is issued are the transitional board or the voters. Mm -hmm. And there's limited articles that are in the uh, at the end there. They list the articles by who can add which. But you don't and you can so. add. You, I think you can at some point. I'm not sure if it's transitional board or the new board. I think it's the new board that can add additional articles. But I'm not. Sure. I'd have to go back and reread. Well, they yeah. I think they can. Some of them require. Vote, but yeah. you know, section one says after the state board of education issues the statewide plan, districts subject to merge shall have 90 days to form a committee with members appointed in the same manner and, and number as required for a study committee under 16 BSA chapter 11, and which shall draft articles of agreement for the new mm. district. During this period, the committee shall hold at least one public hearing to consider and take comments on the draft. Uh, articles of agreement. Now, if they were going to say the transitional board was going to do that, they wouldn't be talking about the membership. Uh, you know. But where is that from? Because I don't remember. Um, it's page twenty twenty three. It doesn't say it. Seven oh six B. It says a study committee. And yeah, that's what I, I, I think, think that's, that's what the transition committee is. is a study so I don't think it is it's a, study a temporary. Right? Right? Earlier on in the, in the document. So the first meeting of the transition award. Or in the meeting for voters whether to uh, amend articles, deadline for vote. But you know, amending articles is different than drafting them. Drafting articles is creating. Well, the, these draft, there's some of these articles cannot be changed, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. some of these are the default, and you have well, the ability to I, amend some. I think we can. So that's that would be, be a group. part of the charge of yeah. this. Yeah. 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 It's getting done correctly. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely not, there are some things about this that are not crystal clear to me. It's, it's not just dates, uh, things like that. Um, um, so, so that would be my recommendation. I'm not going to be here next week, but I would be willing to serve on this group. Okay. So now it's going to be fun. Are you a chair or a yeah. clerk? So I'm going to be on transitional anyway to come to the being. What I would like to, what, would, I would, what I would love to include with the packet. Mm -hmm. I want to work with you guys. Yeah. I want to work with that. That, that would just be clear again. Yeah. Anything, yeah. anything 40, not 46, 49, just tell me what you need and I'd like to be there to help you guys with that. What I would love to include with the packet, Bill, along with all this stuff, is a list of the chairs and clerks from the six. We boards. have that. I actually put that together, so yes, we can do that. Yep. What's that? There, and for East Montpelier Board, there could be a discussion about who will be clerks in this years, and will the, there be changes? The document said that it, it has to be the chair and the clerk as of July 1st, 2018. Okay, well, good. That answers the question. Yeah, yeah. I think they anticipated that, I yeah. guess, but yeah. all of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. Um, okay, so the, um, so now that we have our four hour SU meeting set up, basically, um, the uh, and I do want to come. I want to come back to this when we sort of get to the actual agenda item for setting the agenda for the SU board meeting, which is that there's no way that that meeting can be managed in 90 minutes. So what are we going to be suggesting about that? More meetings, a longer meeting, and whatever it may be. Um, but I do want to touch on this issue of something that I don't think we've ever discussed. Maybe we discussed around the edges of it, um, but it's kind of in the way that I think about it is. Um, what is the real appetite among the boards for investing uh, 
uh, time, effort, money in resisting or contesting a decision by the state board. Um, there's a lot of factors, I think, that go into that question. You know, to what extent do people feel like um, contesting it would be, is a matter of principle? To what extent do people feel like contesting it would be successful or not? Um, you know, what, what if any trade-offs are we making by, by doing that? Is there sort of political consequences also? So this, it's a complicated question, um, but it's one that I think that the, our boards collectively um, have to grapple with at this point. Um, and I think that the best forum uh, for us to do that as a group is, is at the SU board. Um, so I would really like to put that, that um, discussion explicitly on the SU board agenda um, for the 26th, and especially because the request that's gone out to the district board chairs uh, from this the group, the name of which is I always forget, um, about you know lawsuits that are being prepared and our boards interested or willing to sign on as plaintiffs, the the requested deadline for uh, passing the information back to um, that group is September 28th. So if any discussion by our boards is going to happen on that particular request, uh, it's it's going to have to happen at the carousel. Meeting next week, um, so it seems like we, you know, it's just we're, our responsibility is to kind of discuss this uh, as a group, um, and then you know, the boards will discuss. Um, so I don't know if there's any um, desire to get into that discussion tonight, but I'm just saying like that's what I would propose. Uh, it should be on the agenda, and that's the way it should be, you know, framed. And can you include some of that framing in the one pager? So yeah. So have a chance to yeah. think about that, including the, the fact that we've been, we're being solicited to join the lawsuit. I'm sure. It's timely. But, it, you know, people need to think about this ahead of time. I think, you know, just, just to comment, I think we're, you know, we've been forced to compromise beyond compromise in what we're doing. I think we should do this as a statement. You know, we're not happy with what's happened. So, you know, in this legislation, and very poorly executed, very, very damaging in many ways. No, I think we have an obligation to oppose that. If we just let it happen, that is not very good. That's not a good message to the people that are pushing this on the interests that have made it work. You know, I'm not con convinced that even if this goes forward, that this battle isn't going to get really messy in three or four years. You know, and the kind of the consequences of this begin to hit. And it's going to be that much more visible that there was op opposition at the time. You know, and they won't be able to look back and just blame. Oh, well, we just, just no one said anything. You know, I think this is important. I, I'm not refuting that it's important to have the discussion. What's the point <clears throat> of the discussion? What's the point of the discussion? What are we looking to accomplish by having this discussion? I mean, that's a good question. I think that I am interested in the question of whether the SU uh, feels that resources, time, effort, and money should be spent on, you know. So there would be a follow-on action item? I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I'm not, I think it's an individual town board issue, actually. I think all the town boards that are voting on it individually is whether or not they're going to join. Um, I think the issues could certainly weigh in, but I think any individual board, if they wanted to sign on, could. I think that's true. I, mean, I think yeah. the individual boards act as they will. Yeah. No, I'm not sort of. Right. I think we're there with the conversation. I wouldn't argue with that. Yeah, that's that's but I think so that, yeah, there's right. some. Right. That's first of all, I think there's some value to, to having the conversation Absolutely. as a group, just so that we kind of hear you know, people voicing their opinion and kind of get a sense of what the. You know, just hearing ideas we may not think of or, you know. The usual benefits of having a conversation, um, but there's a second question for me, I think, in this role, which is, um, what does the SU, the SU is its own entity, um, so to w what is the SU's opinion about um, its own resources? Like, do we as a group um, have a sense of whether we want to invest those resources in, in an effort like that or not? 
Um, the SEU board can't join, can't be party to the lawsuit anyway, so that's not right. really a question that's on the table for the SEU board. Um, but there is a question of, you know, um, if district boards are going to be voting to join the lawsuit um, and there are costs associated with that or, you know, there's the request being made of the SU central office, um, you know, to provide, spend time supporting, you know, the lawsuit. And that's a question that, that um, you know, it's the responsibility of the SU board to okay. at least be aware of. I just want to add so. that I'm the superintendent for the local districts and for the SU. So I am the CEO for the local districts and the SU. So just, you know, the local districts, I agree with what you said, make your own decision. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but just, you know, it, it's, it, either way it affects, because we've consolidated a lot of the management pieces in this office. Yeah, and that raises another sort of question that has been, you know, sort of chewing at me, which is, um, what if they, what if there are differences of opinion and then we have different boards um, asking different things of Bill uh, to do or not to do certain things? Um, how do we manage through that process as well? Um, so yeah, it's a naughty it's a naughty question, you know, and I'm not suggesting I know what the answer to it is, but I just well, think it's I'm just trying to frame how it's used in the agenda. So typically things that we do when we have a carousel meeting, we use the full board meeting to share information or uh, in this case, m maybe um, represent opinions so that across the board, all board members from local boards can essentially hear the same thing, can, can, can see clarity on similar questions. So the intent of the discussion at the full board, in that case, would be to help inform the decisions that the local boards make in their carousel meeting. To me, that's that would be a purpose of doing this at the full board. And I'm being mindful of what you're saying time-wise. Um, so this is just me. But I don't want to have a two-hour discussion to have a two-hour discussion and it doesn't result in anything happening and then we go to our local boards and make decisions. Mm -hmm. If we're going to spend, if we're going to, and I think it's worth allocating time for, but I think it's, it, there's a purpose. So, for example, the purpose is, this is on everyone's local agenda where you'll be making decisions tonight. We want to have a time to um, hear comments from across the issue, however we want to put it, but the purpose of this is to help inform the decisions that will be made at the local boards. So then there's no expectation that, <coughs> that something's going to happen at the full board level, or if something's going to happen at the full board, that that's expressed, and the reason we're having this discussion is because we're going to do this, or this is the next step that we're going to do. I think that we're, yeah, I mean, I, I see what you're saying, and I, um, there certainly is one objective uh, in my mind, um, is to, first of all, make sure that all this information is, that's going to go out in the packet gets to every board member, and that we, you know, I'm going to certainly really plead with people to read the packet carefully before they come to the meeting and I hope that all of you will follow up with your boards to do the same because this is just not a meeting that we can come to and try to be catching up like in the moment. Um, but I, I guess Stephen I can, and I guess I raise this to the group, I don't know if, if my sense of this is accurate or means that a certain course of action is, is appropriate or not, but um, it seems to me that we, as an SU, we, we act collectively as a group, and we also act severally as district boards. Both, of, both are true at the same time. And um, it may be that, as a collective, we have an opinion about how, um, if we should um, try to contest or resist what the state board may do, um, and if, if, we should, or if we should, to what extent 
we'd be willing to do that. Um, and there may be, there may be a, a collective sentiment that differs from the sentiment that a particular district board might express. Um, and I think that we, we've really tried, I, I think we've really tried our best to like ever have everyone be on the same page. But I'm, I, I'm, I'll just say I personally am concerned about the prospect of an amount of money I don't know potentially being spent in service to an initiative that I might not support, um, to time and effort of, of staff and the system you know, being directed towards um, you know, an effort that I think maybe has very little likelihood, if any, of, of success at the expense of a, that attention being paid on the management of the school system or the education of kids. Um, and so I don't know, I guess when I'm, I don't know the answer, I'm just saying in my mind, the reason I want to bring it to the SU board as a question is that I think there is a question there. Um, there is a question to be voted on by the SU board, which is what is the SU board's opinion about whether we should be investing resources and time and effort into um, resisting this or not. Um, so and I'm not advocating one thing or another. All I'm saying, saying is if that's the purpose of it, yeah. then we've, we've got this, we've set aside, this is the agenda item, and the reason we're having this discussion is we're gonna, we're gonna ask for a, a, a vote or a straw vote or an opinion, what, however we wanna word it. We're having this group collectively because we want to know how we feel collectively. Mm -hmm. And then in the carousels, the local boards will decide how they're doing it. I just, in the initial yeah. discussions we were having earlier tonight, it sounded like we're going to have this long meeting and people are going to, you know, it's like a forum and everyone gets up and people say what they think and we allocate two hours and then it's done and we go, okay, next item is 2.4. Well, then why are we spending two hours doing it? Yeah, 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 I get it. So I guess on the, on the debt question, I would think that, you know, there's some amount of time, it seems to me, that's appropriate for airing what's in Scott's document, what the attorney said, the reasons for forming a subcommittee, and then mm -hmm. the, end, the end of that is voting to form the in charge of the committee, right? Um, so for this, I guess I would suggest, again, that there's some, um, you know, as you rightly said, I think there's a kind of informational and discussion responsibility here to review the draft default articles of agreement, talk about the timeline, um, you know, think about some of those and air some of those issues and, and then get to charging that subcommittee, which is what we've basically discussed here tonight. Um, and then I guess I'm proposing that there is a question um, to be put on the table. I think the question is on the table. Um, and it is, the question is, do the WCSU boards intend to try to resist this or not? Yeah, I think the WCSU board is one of the boards that has to answer that question. One of the things we have to think about is the timing of this and what message that sends to the State Board of Education before they've made a decision on our proposal. Yeah. So whatever, you know, if we come to a consensus mm -hmm. that, hell yeah, we're going to fight this, that sends one message. But if we send another that says, well, we're really not willing to spend the resources yeah. It's a big deal. To go up against this, then it makes it easier for them to mm -hmm. do something that's uh, against what we've proposed. Yeah, and I'm not. I'm not sure if I would um, feel as strongly. I guess I. I do feel like there's a certain sense of urgency just because the timeline is so compressed. Yeah. Um, I get that. You know, it may be. It may be that by the time we have our next carousel meeting, the statewide plan would already be out. But the, the thing that really accelerated the, the, the feeling of needing to discuss it was this, this message going out to the you know, board chairs across the state that you know, there's this you know, class action lawsuit essentially um, being worked on and do your, will your board sign on as plaintiffs? Um, and the deadline again that's been given for responding to that is two days after our carousel meeting. Well one of the things in it is I recall that you know, it should I mean, I actually talked to David Kelly about it. He thought it was going to be between a thousand and two thousand dollars. He guessed the expenses to be, you know, for 
a town, you know, because it's mainly filing expenses and the lawyers do all the volunteering at the time. <coughs> but it also sounds like should a district be held harmless or, sh you know, then they were essentially out of the suit as well at that point. They were not obligated, you know, to pursue that. So I don't know. That, those are points that I kind of found interesting. I, I agree with Chris wholeheartedly. I mean, it, it's kind of a big message. There's a, there, I mean, we've been played along this process and they're watching us. They're watching to see if they're in for a fight or not. And I agree that they are going to, I think it looks like there isn't going to be a fight where things are not going to look as good for us as if we kind of draw a line in the sand. I don't know. I, I mean, I would like to see a board. I would actually like to see some unity of cry, even if, if nothing else, you know, some kind of a letter, you know, the, from the unified districts, you know, to or the, to this effect, you know. But we've we've put a lot of work into this, and you've all seen how we've been railroaded down and funneled down, and basically all that work has almost gone to nothing. And you know, is that right? Well, I think the discussion needs to be had. <clears throat> I don't think we're going to get. This is where the split's going to start. Because I feel confident there are going to be boards that will not vote. Oh, I they don't. They don't. So. It doesn't have to be. A... I, I understand. But. So, so when you're, when so, you're saying. So it, 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 it could be of value to have an issue why. It, it could just muddy it up even more. So, you, so maybe not taking this you want vote. Or, I, I mean, just yeah. just because the concern is the political impression, just, uh, and you don't have to talk worry about a split, better not have a vote at all if there's going to be a split. But I think also what I hear you saying, I'm just trying to, and again, I'm really am searching here, but um, I think you're right. I mean, it's likely that the district boards will vote differently on this question. Mm -hmm. So the split will be apparent mm -hmm. starting on September 26, assuming that boards actually take it up on their agenda that night. Um, so would the SU board um, express any opinion on this issue? Is it material to the either the perception or reality of a split at that point? Or can the SU, be, can the SU board be a party? Cannot be part of the lawsuit, no, no. Well, I think it is relevant. I, th I think the board should know going in whether a majority of the SU board feels one way or another. I think that's very relevant. Because you're, you're making an active decision to go in a different direction. Yeah, and the decision of any of any single board affects the whole. And we are in relationship with one another. Like that's, that's always, that always can be true. I mean, no, the, the, sure. well, the circumstances that happen within an individual school affect, affect the whole in terms of resource allocation. Um, this is just a different variation of that. That's true, but I think a particularly significant one. Um, yeah, so. So, I'm the one keeps me pushing this. About the, See, yeah, the if, if we're going to allocate time and have a discussion, <coughs> why are we having And I'm not, I'm not asking why for justification on why we should do it. I'm asking why in the sense of what are we going to communicate? What's the, what's the end point? What's, what's, how are we going to explain why we're having this discussion? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe it's, it's a distinct information. It's an information meeting for the board, yeah, I mean, if anything. And, and, we, and we, I agree with you, this shouldn't be a two-hour thing. It needs to be capped and fairly brief. And, you know, here's what it is. You know, we vote on this as individual boards. How do people feel? They try to get a brief taste on that. But. The SU board is responsible for the oversight of significant resources and services in the school system. You know, the SU board has that responsibility. It's not like theoretical. You know, it's a real concrete thing. And uh, you know, I I guess. You know, I'm the chair. I'm not trying to predetermine the outcome of the discussion or even channel it in a particular direction. Uh, 
uh, but it's true that besides being the chair, I also have an opinion about it, as you can as you can see. Um, and you know, it seems to me that um, you know, I'll just say for the record, and I'll say it again at the meeting next week if if it's appropriate. But um, you know, I think the so far everything that I've seen from our own attorney, from you know, lawsuits that have already been filed and struck down by judges. You know, the ruling is that, that the state has the clear jurisdiction to do what it wants to do. Um, and so it seems to me that, you know, any attempt to file a lawsuit to stop that seems, um, at best, very, very unlikely to succeed um, and to be a distraction, and at, and at worst, um, frivolous. And uh, so, you know, since it's our job to, um, you know, oversee the resources of the SU, I think the SU board has a responsibility um, to weigh in on whether it thinks SU resources should be spent on an effort like that or not. Would you deny schools from doing that? It would be able to. It would be school resources. It wouldn't be SU resources. Well, I mean, then, and then, but I think then we just, um, you know, there's a, you know, I guess I'm agreeing with what you're saying in a way that there's an inherent kind of um, conflict or, um, I don't know what, the, what a better word is, there's a, there's a kind of um, there's a strange impasse almost at that point. I have no idea how to resolve it, um, but it doesn't sort of change. That doesn't change sort of the underlying responsibility of addressing the question for me. Um, so I think it helps inform the local board votes mm -hmm. later on that night too. So see it as having a good purpose. So some, a question of some kind like that is what I would be hoping to get through that discussion. Um, somebody else would have to make a motion, but, uh, but that's, that was my thinking about it, bringing it to the ASU board, so. It's okay with me, I, my whole. No, no, I get it, you're just, what's the, what, what, what's the resolution of the what conversation? Is the resolution? The motion, yeah. I would make the motion. I'm, 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 how do we want to wordsmith this? Well, I'm not suggesting you come with your own motion. Anybody or can make can. anybody can make a, a motion. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anybody can make a motion. You know, that's that's up to each individual. Member. Just a point of order for that meeting. You should decide whether you want a straw vote of all 32 or you want the SU board meeting. Members, you don't need necessarily decide that tonight. But if you know, because you've got 18 that are voting members, right? If you want everyone to weigh in. And you've done that before, so oh, I'm sure. Everyone, everyone I think you would too. Board, right. no, board, no, board, right. no, I would yeah. too, Chris. No, I, 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 I just want you to say that's what you're saying. That's what you're saying. This is a straw, the straw vote. It's not yeah. an official vote of the SU board because there's only 18 there, and we want everyone to vote. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually and what, it's and what if some boards only have their three voting reps there? I think you guys. I think people should encourage. That's right. They encourage everyone to show up. Vote. And if it's a straw vote anyway, then, okay. you know, it's not. Uh, uh, for me, I have resolution on what's the agenda and the purpose. You have resolution on the question. I'm, you I'm comfortable yeah. shutting up. I'm satisfied. I've exhausted my questions on that topic. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay, are there any other issues specific to Act 46 that people, or the default records of agreement that people want to bring up before we, we move on to other things in the agenda. Okay. I do. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Almost made it. To no, kind <laughs> Oh, well, let's come back to that at okay. under, under, under the agenda. Five. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay. It's, that's an issue we have to discuss, though, yeah. Okay, uh, board goals. Um, so goal one, board governance operations. Um, there was some discussion in August at the meeting I didn't attend about possibly, um, you know, trying to address a particular uh, system of governance, maybe at every meeting, September, October, November, uh, before, you know, we were, were theoretically to report out to the um, SU board on our, our thinking at that point. Um, uh, so some folks have, been, have read, I know, the at least part of the policy governance um, uh, booklet that Bill had available. I had asked Stephen and Kari if they might be willing to speak to that tonight. There's two other 
systems that we've named, one is um, appreciative inquiry, and the other one is um, uh, no, no, the, yeah, way, 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 way is they have taken down all the stuff off their web, and if you want to pay for them to come in and train you, they will. <laughs> but the so article, you know, the chapter so this, this is, down, this right? is, Mel Gill is one of the leading researchers in governance. He's out of Toronto, Canada, the University of Toronto, I think, or another university in Toronto. Um, and uh, up to the book just came two days ago, no. Um, but there's a lot of good, there's a couple other resources, there's a couple other governance systems that he talks about in here that would be ones I'd put on that list to want to look at. Okay. Uh, that aren't necessarily American, but are the results oriented is something that's getting many, much traction in Canada right now. Mm -hmm. And Canada, is, as I said before, the uh, Commonwealth countries, especially Australia, Canada and England are very much some of the leading research in the world on governance. Mm -hmm. so. so we have a little bit less than an hour in the agenda uh, for this meeting. So uh, I don't know if in 10 minutes, maybe in five, we can get the briefest of overviews of your thoughts on policy governance. And then maybe we can spend a few minutes talking about how we want to. If I head out, it can be brief. OK, go. go. Shoot. Ends and means it's policy governance. The boards are concerned with the ends. This is what we want to have happen. These are the results we want to see within the parameters we've set and the legalities of what's allowed. Administration, go do this. Boards don't get involved with the how. Boards get involved with the result and where, the, where what we want to have happen, happen. And that's what boards, for me, that's what I took out of policy governments. We spend our time, boards say, this is what we, this is, I'll make stuff up. You know, we want the, the standard mass scores to improve by 10%. How are you going to show us that? Okay, thank you very much. In six months, we want those results shared with us. And that's it. We don't get involved with how that's done, or who does what, or how it's allocated within. The administrators do that, and the, and the staff does that. And they give us a report. And this is what you want, this is your expectations, this is where we stand. Um, so, in my summary, that's the basic thing. There's, there were some other highlights. Um, one of them, unified voice. So dissension is expressed in the decision-making process. And once a decision is made, the board is unified on that's what the policy is and support it. And there's no, um, there's no factions that are saying it's really important in that at least what was shared or presented. That that's an important thing. Um, I'm trying to think, there were two or three important things. But anyway, my summary is ends and means. Boards are concerned with the ends. So. And Carl, you're the board at the co-op uses policy government. Right. So um, you know, I've been using the system for close to 15 years now. I've learned a lot about it. It's um, it's really kind of become the model in the food co-op world for, for a variety of reasons. And I guess it's gained some traction in, in the schools as well. And I think one of the reasons, at least for the co-ops, is that it brings sense to all the different things that we're trying to accomplish. You know, it was possible in the old days to for board meetings to just be sprawling, covering all these different things in a pretty, fairly chaotic way because there's so many values at play, so many different things that people want to try to address. And the policy governance helps to organize that, and and um, so the, so I actually I have a slideshow that I put together on on policy governance. I, Johnny and Flora asked me to present last fall, and it didn't come together. But when you brought this up, I went right to the slide about what are some of the advantages, and it's not a it's not a holy grail, it's not a silver bullet. There's there's definitely relies on people to to make it work. 
But um, some of the advantages, the first one was clarity of roles, and Stephen hit it right on the head. It's, what, it's very clear what the board is in charge of, and it's very clear what the management is in charge of. And it's not like you can't talk about the crossover, but it's, but it's just not our job to, to manage the system. Um, so that's, that's really helpful. It's also um, really useful in getting clear on what expectations are. So the board can be as specific as it wants to be, or as general as it wants to be, about what its expectations are for its, both itself and for the management. And that's really helpful in getting that discipline of writing down what your expectations are, really deliberating and writing down is super helpful. I can say, being you know, in the CE role, e role, you're not left doubting or wondering, what am I supposed to be doing here? Um, related to that, um, boards don't have to be experts. Like I, I'm always been forthcoming. I don't really know that much about what it takes to educate children, but I think I can be effective on these boards because it's a different role, and we hire experts to administer the, administer the system. As long as we're clear about what we think the values of the community are and what the ends are, um, then then we can we can do a good job. And there's a bunch of other things, but I think the main thing that it boils down to me is it's, it's a system that's, that is systematic, meaning you can cover everything that you think is important in a, in a organized way, you know, over the course of a year, say. Um, it's comprehensive, it covers all the topics, and in the end, it does a pretty good job, I think, of supporting accountability. So making sure that the management is accountable to the boards, and then, in turn, the boards have the information to be accountable to the community and reflect out, here's what we're doing on your behalf. And I think that our current system does some of that pretty well, but I, I, I've long felt we could do a much better job of that, whether it's the policy governance or not. I, I, I feel like we're not clear enough about what our expectations are, and in return, we don't get the information that, that we need to, to truly hold the system accountable and, and be accountable to the community. So um, there's, there are drawbacks, there are, there are things that, that don't, don't work as well or, or couldn't possibly work if you don't do a good job. I think that, that this chapter two that Bill sent out yesterday is, was really great, it's really helpful. It, it does as good a job of summarizing policy governance as a lot of other things I've read. One of the, but, it, but it shows some other governance systems. Like, yeah, I want yeah, to look it, at that results in It shows differences. I want to go find it. I hadn't heard about that until I read the book. And the, and the big so, nugget wow. in that, if you haven't read it, is it's his conclusion, and I don't know how replicable this is, but his conclusion was it matters less what system you use yeah. than you pay attention to the system you're using. Yeah, I, mean, I actually highlighted that um, that quote. It was really cool. Because yeah. um, he was talking about these big studies he's done, and it said this is gen it's generally consistent with the conclusions of recent study on policy governance model is that the particular approach to governance generally matters less than the fact that the board is was paying attention, serious serious attention, to its governance practices and with a view to self-improvement. And one thing I'll say about policy governance is it kind of forces you to reflect and really wrestle with what do you think the priorities are and what you, what you think the expectations ought to be. So. so what are the disadvantages of policy governance? Well, um, it it tends to, one of the criticisms that puts a lot of uh, responsibility and authority in the CEO's role, mm -hmm. and the board, and I think this is true in general, but I think the, the board is really relies on the CEO to get information and through reports and otherwise. Uh, so people are, some people are uncomfortable with that. I think that's kind of the reality of a bigger system like this anyway. Um, that's something to be aware of. It also is, is only as good as the board makes it. The board really has to drive it and 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 then demand um, good results and and information back. Um, and if you just go with the boilerplate and you don't really deal with it um, in the way it's meant to be, then you're only going to get out what you put in. There was something in that article too that people sometimes find it confusing, but it didn't say why they yeah. find it confusing. I thought well, policy, policy governance was yeah, policy governance. Another quote that was really good that really impacted me because I. I, like I said, I want to go investigate this other part, governance sure. I had heard. Um, but, and I thought it was it's because of this quote that I was like, I think this might be a place to look for Washington Central. Um, Determination of approach to governance that is right for a particular organization clearly requires more than a selection from a menu of available alternatives. It requires creative application of 
practical knowledge and a basic understanding of how various <coughs> concepts of governance fit in their particular organization. With all the work I'm doing on climate and culture and my doctoral work, that just really rung true to me. And that's why the results based um, governance system was one for me to kind of look at and say, huh, that's more of a partnership mm -hmm. between the CEO and the board. It's not a layered system. As with just with policy governance, like everything comes through, where it's more of that, it was that idea of partnership and working together. Um, and that there are some, and it, it talks about it where that results base is more of a, um, is more, you have subcommittees, like you have a finance committee. And you have some of the subcommittees like we have here, not necessarily do the work of management, but you're working together to kind of solve some problems. And that makes a certain amount of sense with like, that we were responsible for communicating the budget, right. getting the budget passed in communities, so, so we are partners in that. Yeah, and, and his summary for this, this chapter was, in mid-sized to larger nonprofits, remember he talked about the studies he's done, the average size is $3 million Canadian. Mm -hmm. that, we only have one organization that's smaller than that, that's Doty. Um, the there are left three choices, traditional governance approach, which we're in, results-based approach, or policy governance. He talks about the other parts that he talked about were for smaller organizations because usually the board is doing work. I've been, and I think we've all served on boards. I have, where you know I was, I was a, the fundraising committee and the tre you know, I was the treasurer and I was the one doing the books for the board. So we we've, we've gone twelve minutes already, um, and uh, so I guess I, I think this. Review and discussion actually is pretty timely, given that you know there's possible upheaval on boards, and it'd probably be useful to you know have some options and thinking around sort of what is a system that uh, we like to use. So I'm interested in kind of trying to keep doing this, even though time is very very short. Uh, what I would like to suggest is, are there two people who are willing to perhaps investigate this results-based? Uh, model of governance that's featured in the article and try to figure out if there's more literature on that or if there's some concise summary of it and bring that to the next executive committee meeting so that we could. I actually have this article right here that's from Mel Gill about this seems to be his piece so I, I download it. I did a quick like 20 minute search through my literature tools. Is the, the, the Gill book? The... Uh, this is a little different. This isn't from him himself but it's about results based and Gill has three or four books about results based. Okay. In that area, different types of governance. No, it's not. Okay. Um, he talks about different governance styles. He's doing a lot of that. So I need to do some more work. We can get more of these books, copy these books. Okay, I'll take order one. Yeah, like you can get it on a Kindle really fast. Yeah. So if you have a Kindle, you can get it. Or an I, you know, they have. So I, I guess part of my objective is to get everybody in the executive committee engaged to some degree in this. Um, you know, I know Kari, Stephen, and I, maybe other people also wrote the policy governance thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Kari, Kari and I have some experience working with it. So I'm just thinking if there's, I guess that leaves another three people. I would, I would be one yeah. to do awesome. the next go round. So could I, I normally would. I'm just, right now, I'm really buried. So I'm sorry, so okay. The next few weeks. Okay. So, I mean, I'd be willing to do it too. But there you go. Me and just went up. <laughs> okay. So, square, square, square. Square. so the Chris, the Chris's. <laughs> Chris, so let me Chris square. Square. Let me send you this article. Square, Chris. Chris, are you Round fine with PDF for this article? Do I? Are you fine if I just send you the PDF? Yeah. Thank you. All right. So goal two. Goal two. Yeah, and I just I wanted to touch on this uh, because real quick. real quick. Yeah, because we talked about this at the retreat. I think the district boards, by and large, have had some entertaining conversations about this as well. Student guarantees, um, oh, yeah. targets, promises, you know, these kinds of things. So, right. and, and then school quality committee, I think, meets tomorrow. And yeah, we haven't met since the retreat. In fact, I haven't met for a few months. But, um, so we're meeting tomorrow. We will have something for you in the packet, I expect, um, for next week. Um, our we don't have a new monitoring report, so basically we have been looking at the data from last year, both this time last year with the student monitoring report, and then the, in the spring we had some individual school data. So what I expect is that we are going to share with you our findings from that, and it's nothing, nothing earth-shattering. You, you probably can pick them up yourself. 
Um, but we will also anticipate having a recommendation or two for you to consider as a, um, a, uh, a goal um, that we would have a month to consider and then maybe adopt at the October. Just be given the timing of things, uh, we didn't feel like or we could really wait until October when we get the next monitor report to, to come up with a goal. If, if the goal is going to have some kind of place in the budget or the plan for next year, we need to move more quickly. So, uh, you know, we'll see how that goes. We've also, I also think that we're going to talk about the retreat and talk about, you know, where do we align with those best practices? What, what more information do we need? And so that'll be somehow part of this, but I'm not sure exactly yet. So is the um, goal or recommended goal going to talk about guarantee or is not? I'm not sure yet. Um, we, have, we haven't discussed that at all. Because we had a very hot discussion uh, at Rome Day about I, I'm guessing it'll have to do with setting some kind of um, goal for improvement of math and or literacy scores. We've talked mostly about math because that's where mm -hmm. it seems, seems like the biggest concern. Okay. And so I guess the larger question is not to spend a lot of time on this, but do we have time we can put set aside on the SU board agenda to discuss this? Bill has said it's not one of his top two priorities, although I know it's, it's a, priority. a priority. It's a priority. So I, I, I would suggest, and again, I won't be there next week, but if the memo's in the packet, people get a chance to look at that, and then if there are any clarifying questions, we'll come back to it in October when we're asking to actually okay. have a vote. We're still anticipating having a monitoring report. In we are. We were working on that. We've got the whole, that whole timeline still going. And, and, I, don't and I want it to go. <laughs> That's a priority for me, just in the operations. Yeah. Um, and we're putting together. I'm going to be, you know, I'll be talking after this. But the way the teachers are creating goals that are aggregate all the way up to the SU. Yeah. So, so basically, all the way up. sorry. I, I think then we're putting it in the packet. We're asking people to read it, and then it's is there any feedback or questions it's from the school yeah, quality? It's more of an FYI at this point. All right. All right. Great. And then goal number three. Um, you know, the district boards uh, theoretically uh, are supposed to be talking about sort of what community engagement, board level community engagement means to them or how they would define it, um, or what the purpose of it is. Uh, I know we talked about that at Doty. I don't know if the other uh, district boards had a chance to talk about that. Yes, it sounds like some of them did at least. Um, so again, the question is, uh, how much of a priority is that? Do we want to make time? to discuss it at the SU board level. Um, any opinions, thoughts? Well, so I'll weigh in on our discussion, and Bill, if I, I don't know if it's 100% accurate, so if you, um, But um, we had a fairly lengthy discussion about it, and I don't think we reached any kind of resolution. Mm. So I don't know if we're in a position yet to say this is what East Montpelier Things around engagement, and it it went around the similar kind of things. Is it about creating interest within a community to be groundswell to do things? Is it we want feedback from the community on things that where the board is interested in? Do we want people at board meetings? Do we want separate events? So there were a lot of things discussed. I don't think we defined what we meant by community engagement. I would say this. I wouldn't say it's just about East Montpelier. I would say it's from every board watching the conversation. Mm -hmm. The how is an easy conversation to get trapped in. <laughs> if we do this, we do that, we do this. Every board sees the importance of community engagement. Very few boards could say why. It was, it was, you know, there was there were attempts at it, but it wasn't like it was coalescing, and I think that'll take a little bit. And I that's that's normal for developing your purpose. So that's, that's, what this, that's why I'm asking the why question. Because when you clearly know your purpose, then doing the how and the what is really easy. But sometimes you get caught in the weeds without that purpose. So I think the, I think the boards, I think it's intuitively in there. It's just gonna take some time for that to come out. And I think that's a natural process. As a group, whether it's five people or 32 people talking about that, and I think that's a good thing because I think there are different, we get too caught in the how we're going to do it. 
instead of the why we're going to do. So if we know the why and our purpose, then we can say, so what's most effective for them doing it? And I've heard a lot of, you know, starting with from selling things, you know, selling what the schools are doing as an active promoter to we want feedback and we want to be, you know, to, and all that in between. Of, you know, we want to know what the community wants. And I think they're all good reasons. I, I haven't heard a bad reason. But it's just that kind of what's the common, you know, at the look at for each board and then where does it come from that? It's, I, I think it's just like what we went through for the student learning outcomes. You, when you're trying to develop that mission or that purpose, it takes those conversations. I think it's really hard to narrow down to one any one specific oh, yeah. thing. Yeah. If you if you're forced to narrow it down, then you're going to zoom out and say something like to do a better job as a, you know, right. as a school system. It, okay. Well, it might be for simple simple to say to communicate, and that means both listening and explaining or educating. You know, something like that. And I'm making it up to the table, so my words cannot be. Yeah, I guess I'm inclined to keep this soft as a board agenda just because it's so full already. Um, and I don't know what we would discuss. Yeah, where would we get at uh, that meeting? I'm not sure. Yeah, exactly. Generally. But, um, <clears throat> you know, I guess it would be great if every executive committee member could bring back to the next executive committee meeting some specific statement from their board about, you know, what they think the purpose of board level community engagement is or. Which means it's. It needs to be on the agendas for next week. Next week. Oh, in yeah. Local board meeting. That's, I suppose that's true. Yeah. That's at your discretion, but I guess that's. Good well, that could be. That could be <laughs> and I, I'm going to tell you the real honesty about making these agendas. <coughs> yeah. It's going to be. The, the, Chris and I talked about this a little bit last week. It, it's literally going to be a 24 hour time turnaround from here till tomorrow night. Because mm -hmm. uh, packets have to go out Friday. Yeah, like Chris is ready to go, and right. I'm going to be sending an email tonight before I leave here to the chair, to the local chair, Sam. Guys, I mean, I guess what I'm saying, and it's just up to the group, but I'd love for that to happen. But I think if something has to be sacrificed on an agenda, I, I think this one, you know, probably seems not like one of the top three priorities. Sure. Or, or well, it's, up to you it's, guys, it's like, not requiring action, so it's a discussion item, and I would say put it on the ask that it go on the agendas, and if we're busy, it will be tabled. Right. Well, I know we talked we talked about it briefly at our board meeting, and it, they were kind of said, well, we're going to talk about that more in September, you know, at a later meeting. But I'm with you. I, I actually think that's a discussion we all have. It's not, it's actually not all that complex. It's, it's deceptive, though. Because it seems, it seems pretty not, it seems simple, but when you start talking about it, suddenly you kind of mm -hmm. go down. Well, you know, know, weird places we're elected talking. members of Cedar Buyer Community to represent them. And, and so we have to have enough, I mean, the idea with community engagement is that we have to have enough feedback, make sure we're just engaging them right, and, and you know, bringing that, you know, that community will and knowledge into the, you know, into the decisions we make for their schools. You know, for me, that, and maybe it isn't that simple, but I'm a deer from the Cal's board. In the steam words of Conrad Smith, mm -hmm. there are different types of representation of an elected official and how they work with their community. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. And it's okay. What? I was thinking of Conrad today. I think about Conrad yes, a lot. Yeah, yeah, a lot of wise things that have happened in the gentleman in two years. Yeah. That was one of my yeah. Okay, uh, let's go to 2.4. This is special education hiring process. This came up in the spring, uh, a discussion about the role of the executive committee in the hiring process. We have tabled it ever since, basically because we didn't have everyone here uh, in any of the meetings intervening. Um, so is there appetite to discuss it? Tonight. Don't everybody talk a lot? Yeah, it doesn't sound like it. What would the purpose of you? <laughs> <laughs> I I am only uh, I'm only one as a democratic body, I'm one person. The ideal uh, outcome from, from my personal perspective um, would be that we would someday make a recommendation to the SU board that they make explicit that um, the 
executive committee and SU board are to be informed when hires are made, but that the uh, authority and responsibility for making those hires belongs to the superintendent. So that would be my personal um, hope. But uh, but again, I'm, I'm one person, so. Where's that authority now statutorily? Statutorily, it sits with the SU board. It does. Because you're, the special educators are hired by the SU, by the SU and in your bylaws, mm -hmm. you've given the bylaws say that all, all, what the bylaws say, you're operating differently, and I support how you're operating differently, but your uh, bylaws say that all items for operation of the SU go to the executive committee except for the hiring of the superintendent and the adoption of the budget. Mm -hmm. I think we should table it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Discuss that further yeah. later. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll table that till October. Gives us something for 5.0 future items. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, okay, so the agenda. What do we got? We've got, um, here's what we have so far. Uh, we have budget, and as we discussed tonight, budget timeline and priorities and constraints. Uh, for Act 46, we have... Um, the debt and all the associated stuff that's going to go into the packet and with the um, recommendation that a subcommittee be established to address that particular issue. Uh, we also have the draft articles of agreement and the timeline and you know, all of that stuff with the recommendation that a committee be established to uh, take a hard look at that and you know, maybe come back to the SE board with some recommendations. Um, we also have an update on Twinfield. So we'll go into that as well. Uh, and then finally, we have, um, you know, does the SU board have an opinion about uh, whether to invest resources in resisting um, what may come? That's the work of things there. Uh, we have a report from the school start time committee. We asked them to come back to us uh, with a report at this meeting. Um, the start time committee did meet and has something to report, so that's on the agenda. Uh, we have the the policy committee charge. We asked the policy committee to come back to us with a charge. They have, they, they're doing that. Um, we have probably a, uh, a brief discussion item on the school quality committee, and I guess we'll you know call goal two. Uh, I guess, yeah, we'll figure out how to get that on here, but it's, it's, it's uh, um, I think we will not have goal three on the agenda. That's my, yeah, okay. Um, is there anything that I'm forgetting? I think that's. I didn't, I, I didn't hear you say it was under Act 46. We've been talking along. Of the first thing would be a review of the uh, draft articles. Yes. And I don't know if review of what it was, but a summary of it. Review of articles of agreement is what we have on our draft. Okay. And, uh, and then I have an associated action item, which is to create the subcommittee. So I assume there's some there's there's a wide range for discussion in there probably, but people may have different things they want to bring up. I, I don't know, but. Um, I have an idea that may be bad and may be unworkable, and I'm not going to be around to help with it. But there's so many <laughs> details. The kind. <laughs> there's so many details with, between the debt and the draft articles. Does it make any sense to have an optional open session Q and A session prior to the meeting for a half hour? If we could get the bills available, if Scott's yeah, yeah. there, and just for people who want to come and ask a bunch of questions that may not be appropriate for the full board. I think the only issue is that if we get a quorum, then we're then the meeting is in session at that point, right? And we sort of have like open meeting it, laws to. Yeah, is that a problem? I mean, if we agree that no action is going to be taken during that time, it's it's it's, it's more uh, education. It's just that. Well, there's, so there's no discussion. It's just informational. Well, that well, would be discussion because that's a tool. Responding to questions. Yeah. There's just going to be so many questions. So I think I think there's a with not thinking about open meeting law right this second, uh, but. I think there's a way to say it's almost walking people through the document mm -hmm. 
And if you'd like to come and we walk, walk through the document, I would almost put it 45 minutes to an hour ahead of time. I'm willing to do that. And basically, it, it's almost like a read. And this is what, and it'd be great to have Scott there or someone else there with me because I think it's other voices. Because we, we can, as we just saw tonight, we can all sit here and read it and we're going to have different interpretations of what it says. And I think that's good to say, you know, hey, yeah. this is how I view it. Doesn't mean it is the way to view it. Yeah, it's the way I read it. Reduce the confusion a little bit. Yeah. So I'm willing to do that uh, and then take, you know, clarifying questions. Um, I think we could even warn it as a, now thinking about warning open meeting law, educational session open for board members to come and read together the act of the articles, the draft articles mm -hmm. of agreement. And I'm also thinking that the debt stuff too. So if, if we're including Scott's or the, the attorney's letter, people probably have questions about what does this mean? Well, I mean, I think it's a good idea, actually. Yeah, I'm happy to we can warn them as two separate things. We can warn them so that, the, you know, there's public when people show up happening. Yeah. And, yeah. They don't, we just mm -hmm. keep, keep, keep rolling. And, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. And I'm, I'd be able to be there, too, if that's... Yeah, funny. I mean, I, I try to set aside time a little bit each week just to read more and more. And right. Talk to colleagues who are in the same place and say, what do you guys read? And people are freed up to ask a question they might not ask in front of But the SU can't... Uh, at the SU meeting? Yeah. Um, I sort of phrase that as like, you know, this question of whether the SU board wants to invest in um, contesting the state board. So no, I think that... You that in, I, I, you agreed, agreed. Well, I, I, I don't know what to... So this is maybe a question for the group. Um, I was not a recipient of the email from... Uh, as the chair of the SU board, I was not a recipient of the email from the group that's preparing the class action suit mm -hmm. um, because the SU board has no capacity to be a, a party to that sure. suit. So only, only the district boards receive that communication. Um, so because I didn't receive that communication as the SU board, I didn't, I haven't like forwarded to anybody or, you know, sort of thought about putting it on the agenda as a specific discussion item. Um, but, you know, if people want it to be on there, we can, we'd have to circulate it and have it come up. You know what I'm saying? And the SU board can't vote to, to, mm -hmm. to join them. No, I get it. No, I get that. I just the, the idea of having that discussed in a, communal form rather than just in the board. I think there's value in that a little bit. But like you said, I don't, wouldn't want that to get, I also wouldn't want that to get out of control. You know, it have to be uh, time-wise, because that could be a, but if it, uh, I don't know how everybody else feels about that. I would probably find a way to bring, bring it in there. Yeah, I don't know. Well, it could uh, be as simple as, I say that now, <laughs> thinking to me is not always simple. Um, something along the lines of if the Board of Education mandated mandated merger, um, you could either do it in the positive or negative. What's the willingness to ex to accept and implement a merger, or the Board of Education mandated a merger? Um, <coughs> would we oppose that mandated merger or something like that? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I we do oppose the merger in principle. I think the the question is to what lengths are we willing to go um, to to contest? You know, so that may be a different a differing outcome. The Board of Education mandates a merger. Are we willing to um, pursue legal action to, to um, resist that merger or fight that merger or oppose that merger? I guess. Although Something legal action would only be one of. I was just going to say, how about all available potential options? If there's something like that, this legal action is only one. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can, you know, the legislature still. For me, if you say all possible, then you say nothing. 
So I, I encourage people to like give some thoughts or wording of motions yeah, they may want to bring. To um, but the question is, you know, do we want the lawsuit that's been put on the table specifically to be part of the conversation uh, with the SU board next week? Yeah, I think it's going to come up. Because it's, it's, sure. no, it's, in, it's in the, uh, it's in the digger. Digger, I mean, so. Mm -hmm. What? It's out, it's out there. there. It's out there. Yeah, it's on digger. digger right? So to... If we're going to discuss it, it's going to come up. Might as well address it directly. So and it has to go <coughs> in the package. I, I, I haven't seen it. I get no idea what it has. Okay. What it says. I don't think there's has it been filed. No, I, I know this. Letter they can't been sent to the. They can't file. They can't the, file it until actual harm is uh, you know sort of an issue or something. So, right. okay. but I my I don't know this for sure. I know there's a state board meeting on October 2nd or something, and my guess with the September 28th deadline is that they're trying to figure out how many plaintiffs can sign on by that date so that they can have it communicated to the state board. And, and how many have that. That, This is just total speculation on no, my part, but, but that's, uh, that's my guess. I think a do not destroy better. Something along those lines was filed. A whole the legislature. Yeah, right, right, that was hot. That was yeah, that, was, that was yeah. 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 Which I think they can do anyway. So. Yeah, you know, I, I, think, lawsuit, it's just saying, I don't think I, I can't remember from the document because it's been a couple weeks since I read it, but I know the hold is in that document in detail, and then it outlines possible lines of argument that would be that would form like the backbone of, of a lawsuit. But it's not like the suit itself is no, 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 no document. It's just the right. sort of the causes that they might pursue to so I guess we can. Well, it can go on, and a motion can be made there, and it's okay with me. And yeah. if I support it, I'll vote for it. I mean, I think it's a, it's, it's probably you know, a good way just to make sure that every board member is aware of it mm -hmm. and it's out there. And so, I mean, some people have probably forwarded it, some people maybe have not. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So. Again, I, this, this issue of time, um, we have 90 minutes currently scheduled for this meeting um, from 5.30 to 7, which is sort of our standard you know, procedure. So if this is our agenda, um, I don't see any way of completing it in, in 90 minutes. Um, so there's three things we can do about that. We can either... Um, start earlier, go later, or we can schedule another meeting um, to discuss some of this. Carousel meeting? Or another SU board meeting, whether it's a carousel meeting or not. Yeah. Um, or, so we can, I, or we can limit discussion. We can definitely try to limit discussion, yeah. I mean, I, we'd have to, I'd want to look a little bit now, like sort of how much time we think we could give each thing. Um, but yeah, that's also, I think, even if we expand the meeting to two hours or whatever it is, we're still going to have to limit discussion. So, yeah. That's an important thing. But, uh, yeah, so I don't know if, um, and I know not all the, the district board chairs are here. Um, you know, I, my first in, in, instinct is to try to schedule the SU board meeting for 5.30 to 7.30 the district board start at 7.30. But I know that that's not necessarily a popular, you know, sort of way to approach it, but we could try to start at five. Some people won't be able to make it because of their work schedules. Um, you know, or again, we can. Yeah, I, I think expanding is probably the least um, long and bad options, like having a two hour meeting, um, just because if the local boards don't finish with it, they can get together, and you're not impacting them. Right. Assembling the group as a whole is more difficult, I think, schedule-wise. Yeah, I think 5.30 to 7.30, if we can get through Act 46 in an hour and a half, and there's three major items, <coughs> I feel this is a pretty small item, I think. Right. Each, each of those gets about a half an hour, and then you have a half an hour left for everything else on the agenda. That seems pretty reasonable. I think you have to be open to, if we're just not getting through this, we're going to have to yeah. commit to another meeting. Right. Or you just identify 
if there are parties that are going to participate, how many there are. Thirty people want to say something, and right. they're limited to thirty seconds. Right, and there's, the, there's another component minutes. which is which is public participation, which we can't anticipate, and we, we have to give time to that too if it if it people show up to the meeting. So, yeah. um, well, that's where I say if if we set up thirty minutes, we've got yeah. thirty minutes. Right, right. And if there's a hundred people that want to talk, they've got ten seconds each. If there's three people, that I want understand. To talk, yeah. I, so I will do. I will do my. What I, if there are no objections, we'll warn the meeting for five thirty to seven thirty, mm -hmm. um, with appreciation and apologies uh, to the district boards and to the leadership team. Um, but I think that we really could use the extra time, and uh, I will do my very best to be strict about timekeeping. We're supposed to assign a timekeeper actually, so maybe I'll do that actually at the meeting, and would appreciate the support of everyone here. In trying to actually Some, make those time mean. limits stick, what's that? Someone mean. That's Someone mean. Cut them off. Sorry. It's so so <laughs> <laughs> the first person I ask. Well, you'll know what I think of them. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, so yeah. 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 Okay. I think I'm set there. And the the committee has asked me, I guess, to draft a one pager yeah. summary. Um, You're not going to be there. You should have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's my suggestion. It was your suggestion. You I have to do the school quality meeting, 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 though. What's that? You're getting out of the pre-meeting meeting, meeting that you put I, I will do my best. I mean, I, I'm not even sure sitting here how I would summarize all that stuff, but I will, I will take a stab at it and send something out. Yeah. So. Okay. We need to uh, do some other things. We need to approve. Uh, self-funded dental insurance rates. Yes. So this is the one piece of budget piece that we can actually bring. We usually try to bring that in the in previous years we brought the flex spending, but that's part of the HRA program. We don't we don't have all the administrative costs yet. So um, this self-funded uh, dental is um, we've been able to keep the rates flat from last year to this year, for, uh, from this year to next to FY twenty. So things, costs won't change. Um, we're gonna use a little bit of fund balance to do that, but there's plenty of fund balance in the fund. It's recommended that we always have 50% of our claims and we'll, we have a little over that. So um, I'm proud to tell you, but Lori, Lori's away at a national conference this week. Um, it's one of the things that she and I have been talking about for a while. So she and I went over all this last week we were looking at it and uh, we, should, we should be fine with keeping the rates same to all the, to take care of her. Really well, so. How, why is the the rates are the same? So why is it going to cost more? More people just a little bit more claims. Participation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not participation, more a little, few fewer more claims have, have happened to us uh, this year than last. We've been anticipating that. So um, the you know you see the employee claims flat from one year projected right now from the projected to this year. You'll see we went to one tw to two twelve. Uh, from the two actual budget year, okay. from the actual the budget right. to 2019, um, we're just we're conservative budget. Yeah, you know, we're being a little conservative. Okay. Um, but dental is pretty inexpensive for us to have to provide. Is there a specific language for a motion? Or? Uh, we just want you to approve the rates for FY20 for the dental plan for for uh, self-funded dental insurance. I make that motion. Thank you. So can I ask a question? Oh, I can make a question. Go ahead. Oh, because uh, her her verbiage was to set the CY19 dental rates. It should be FY. FY2020, that's what we're doing. FY20. Okay. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. That's a typo. Okay. okay. Any discussion? Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Uh, we need to approve the board orders. I would make a motion to approve the board orders in the amount of $506,851.42. Second. I'll second that. Any discussion? 
All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> okay, uh, appointing board representative slash proxy for VHI and Visbet. We have these two colorful forms here. Yep, and I would like to just add to the agenda because Floyd said this to Stephen and I. There's also a representative for VSBA. Right, Stephen and I read that correctly. And Floyd, she's going to be at the meeting for the VSBA. She's volunteering. And I think she should be a rep for VSBA. I don't think the superintendent should be that if there's going to be a board member present. Oh, you're saying the VSBA is going to be at the annual meeting at that same oh, time. So, so Flora is already going to be She's already yeah, there. these she's, meetings? Yes, okay. for the for VSBA. Those are VHI and Vista. It's yeah, three yeah, yeah. organizations. Right. But for VSBA, and she can be fine with me. She wants to be the VHI and Vista. I can work with her on that. But if the board so chooses, but for VSBA, I would recommend that Flores. She's a, yeah. already on the board. She's going to be there. She can represent Washington Central very well. And I think a board member should represent for the superintendent's association. For that, sorry, for the school board association, a board member should represent for the school board association. Yeah, I, I'm just confused. Do we need to make a motion to that effect? Yes, or? there yes. can only be one voting representative for the entire SU. For the school board. For the school that board was not on this action item. Right. Floor reminded Stephen and I today. But I thought she already represents a, like our no, region. No, she represents Central Vermont. I see. Oh, she's on the elected Vermont School elected. Boards Association okay. Board. I see. For Washington Senate. Central Supervisory Union has one vote. I see. At, for anything that's voted on okay. at the Vermont School Boards Association annual meeting. Okay. So we have to appoint someone to be that person to vote. All I see is have one. Oh, yes. One step one. one. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and changed last year. Who typically have we nominated or appointed? So if for, last year, yeah. my understanding is the East Montpelier board supported Floor doing it, and it never formally reached the SU board because uh, no one thought to do it because it was new. I see. So in previous board. years, in previous years, this the boards have appointed me to when we especially got into the consolidation of the health care plans. Yeah. So she really wanted to be mindful that it was an SU decision. Yeah. Because it has to be this year, not an SU decision. <clears throat> I, I'm sorry, I, I moved on, actually, to the behind. <laughs> no, that's not. <laughs> oh, so yeah. Bill, uh, the superintendent's Usually has right. always been the one that we've appointed in the past. To all three? No. No. <laughs> VI and Visbit. Not the SBA. So I move that we appoint for the as, as the SU representative for the Vermont School Boys Association. Association. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I move we, we appoint board. Bill Kimball as the the SU issue. representative slash proxy for VI and Visbet. Is there a second? I'm second. Yes, sir. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Great. So just make sure you sign those. Two. I will, yeah. Uh, reports to the board. Um, we mentioned it earlier, Stephen mentioned it. Um, Resilience, I thought was was great to see how people were out there. I really want to, and I'd like to get it in the minutes to recognize Kelly Bushy. She really spearheaded this to bring this. Uh, she had support from others, but did a tremendous job of bringing resilience and yeah. putting together that great uh, discussion panel that was there Monday night. Um, I put out a couple of things on Twitter and on Facebook yesterday, just really thanking them. Um, it was a great discussion. We and the support that we, you know, it was unexpected, but seeing from those panels some of the work we're doing and work that they do in other districts and saying where we're headed was just, it made me feel really good about what we're doing. You know, when they say we're, we're doing the leading work they see. So, <coughs> so yeah. Mm -hmm. So Kelly, Kelly deserves, she leads that work. Any questions? Sorry, no, I'm into. No, that no, I'm just. I would take any questions from what I wrote. I talked about some of these pieces. I'm really excited that Keith McMartin is going to be joining us. I think that's going to be a real win-win. Mm -hmm. um, I like He's a fellow board member. Rick knows him from Board of Caps. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Uh, let me just ask, are there any questions from the uh, committee members about any of the other reports? The director's report, the uh, financial report, all this committee, school quality, school start time. Oh. Okay. Um, in that case, uh, I will. There it is. No. I will. I will move that uh, the executive committee uh, enter executive session for the purposes of discussing um, an issue related to the superintendent's contract. Second. All in favor? Okay. Thank you.